this little mini PC from AliExpress any good as a Plex server? Let's find out right after this. So this is a Firebat T8 Plus. Now this is a really neat little mini PC. I was browsing around AliExpress and I've had my eye on this for a while and I was lucky enough that AliExpress actually wanted to sponsor a video today. And they asked me to pick something out and I, of course, picked this one out. I want to know how well this will work as a Plex server. Now, this comes preloaded with Windows 11 Pro, so this is going to be perfect as an everyday driver for checking email, browsing the web, watching YouTube videos. Now this has 16 gigabytes of RAM, so more than enough for Windows 11. Many of these little mini PCs come with eight gigabytes. Now I got this one, this is $118 plus tax. Now this sold out, now this came from Firebat official global store, and it was shipped within the United States. But if you were interested in this specific one, it looks like most of the sellers now just have the eight gigabyte variant for around this price. The 16 gigabyte variant has jumped up quite a bit in price, and this one's actually sold out from the Firebat official store. But as you can see, this one has a lot of input on it. It has a lot of output. I'll show you all those. It has 512, uh, 512 gigabytes of internal storage as well. And it has the N100 Celeron processor. That's a four core, four thread, but it's very low power consumption, six watts. I'm gonna discuss that more in a moment. So as you can see, it has three USB 3 ports on this side, and it's got three HDMI ports on the other side. So you can hook up three monitors to this, which is pretty crazy. And on the rear, you have your 12 volt input, which I'll show you the power supply here. I've already had it undone because I've been uh, testing it out. So just your little wall adapter, and then it has your audio out for hooking up some speakers. And then you got two LAN, you have two ethernet connections. So you have some redundancy there, if one would go bad, or if you wanna run like a dual LAN connection, that's really cool on something that's this small. Cause this is considerably smaller than the last mini PC that I looked actually, I bought for my dad a couple of years ago for Christmas. I'm really surprised that it, these are just getting so small. Now, the, another nice thing about the N100 processor, besides it being really low power, is the integrated graphics that come with this processor. Now, you may laugh and say, what do you mean? That's terrible, you can't game or nothing. Well, yeah, but for a Plex server, it's really, really important because Intel QuickSync technology that's part of that, that can transcode video very, very fast, and it can do it in real time without any buffering or uh, stopping of the playback. So you can play back multiple streams at once if it needs to transcode. Because a lot of these devices nowadays will just be direct streaming. What it means it just sends a file out unaltered, or at least the video. A lot of times it has to transcode the audio or the container. But if you're, if you're sending out a file to another device that can't play that resolution, or if it's remote or away from your house, many times it will transcode that. And if it can't do it with the video card, it'll do it with the CPU and that can be really slow. And you wouldn't want to do that with the CPU itself, but through hardware transcoding. Now, if you're a Plex Pass subscriber, then you have that availability to you, which I am. So you can use your graphics card to transcode the video. And the Intel QuickSync can do many streams, as you'll see later here in the video when we do some testing with this little guy. Now for this video, I'm gonna be using Linux for the Plex server. You can absolutely use the provided Windows 11 Pro that comes with this. It's a very good, oper very good operating system. And with the 16 gigabytes of RAM, you're gonna have no problems with Windows 11. The reason why I'm gonna go with Linux is something called HDR tone mapping. If you wanna send out a video file that's an HDR, typically it'd be a 4K source, to a, a computer or a TV or a mobile device many times, it doesn't have HDR screen, it's gonna to need to tone map that so that it looks correct on that device. Otherwise, it'll look all washed out and really, really bad. And Windows, it, Plex can't do that in Windows, but it can do it in Linux. So I like to have that availability so that if I have an HDR source, it still will look pretty good played back on a non-HDR device. 
So if you have windows, that's the only downfall. You're not going to be able to tone map a 4K or it doesn't have to be 4K, just any HDR source so it looks good on SDR devices. Now today I'm going to be installing something called Casa OS. I'm going to put it basically runs on top of Debian. So I'm going to install Debian on here and then Casa OS, which is just like a Docker containment uh, container management software. You, you uh, load it and you interface with it through your web browser. So I'm not going to go through how you can do that because Techno Dad Life already has a really good video explaining how to install it on uh, Debian and Casa OS on, on any device any PC. So I'll link to his video. I'll try to put a card up here as well. You can just check that video out. It's very brief, goes over the few commands and gets you set up with Casa OS. But like I said, you can, you can use the windows that comes installed on here, I should say, no problem. But if you want to go with Linux to have the HDR tone map, you can use a desktop environment, uh, whatever you want to use, Pop OS, Ubuntu, it's perfectly fine. But when you don't have to run that desktop environment, you're just saving some system resources. So if this if you use this Plex, and you're not gonna be using the desktop environment very much, then there's no reason to install that. You'll just install Debian with the SSH terminal only, and then Casa OS is how you'll kind of interface with it. And again, his video explains it all. And I'll kind of briefly show you Casa OS here in a moment. So I just wanna also show you the, another few accessories you do get with this. So they do give you an HDMI cable, so you can connect it up. We have three connections, three HDMI, so you can again run three monitors, which is really cool. Then they give you a little mount with some screws. If you wanted to take this, you could actually mount this like in the rear of your monitor, so it's kind of out of the way. And then of course your little power button, which I didn't mention yet, is in the front. Just tap that into a turn it on. This is very, very quick to load into Windows, and it's quick to load into Linux as well. To get into the BIOS, I believe it was just holding down the uh, but I think the F7 button is what I did. It brings up the boot screen. You can go to the BIOS from there. It loads so quickly, it's hard to get into the BIOS because it's loading so fast into Windows. All right, I think that's enough of looking at the actual computer here. Let's get on over to my computer and show you the Casa OS and how Plex operates and how well does it function on this little mini PC. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we have Casa OS installed. Pretty simple process. So as you can see, I have Plex installed. I also install Tatalui, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. That'd be what I use to monitor Plex. So I can show, it shows a little bit better information about what is playing. Now you do need to map Plex so that the container looks at the volumes correctly. So I'm using an external SSD that I have plugged into the Firebat and you just need to map that. And you just do that underneath the settings for this container of Plex and you do that down here under volumes you add and you navigate to it give it a name i gave my slash media with a small m so now i see both the large m media and a small m media when i navigate through the folders and then you want to go ahead and save that so if you click on plex it's just going to open that up and it'll be your regular plex interface through your web browser but we'll go look at tetlui and we can show you that right now I am streaming three videos using Plex and I can show you exactly what we're streaming. But before I do that, I want to let you see that over here, you can, you can see that using very little CPU, 13% down to nine and 6% RAM. So very little resources being used, even though I am streaming three videos right now. You can see the internal storage and below that, you can see this is that detachable external SSD that I have plugged into the USB port. So here we are within the Tetsalui dashboard. You can see we have the three video files playing. Now two of these, the first and the third one, is just direct streaming. These are already HEVC sources, high efficiency video codec, but they are able to stream directly, though it is converting the containers here to these two movies, MKV to MK, MP4. That takes very little processing power. And it is doing some transcoding of the audio sources, which also is very easy on any CPU to do that. But in the middle here, we can see in the Ghostbusters, not only is it doing that to the uh, container and the audio, but it's also transcoding the video file. And it's doing not just transcoding it down from 4K to 1080p, 
but it's also doing the HDR tone mapping, which is only available on Linux. It's going from a high dynamic range, HDR10, down to your SDR, your standard dynamic range. You know, your typical TVs, they can't display as many uh, tones or colors. So it's doing all of that. And as we saw here, using very little resources again. So it's very easy. So we can absolutely, we could stream more video files than this. I just wanted to test out three. Everything's working really, really well. I'm looking at the files that are playing now, the videos, and there's no stutter, there's no breakup, there's no buffering. So this little PC is just phenomenal for an a, a, a Plex Home media server. As long as you can hook up some external hard drives, because obviously that's gonna be the biggest factor since you don't have that internal storage. But this is really great. If you're interested in this little mini PC, there'll be a product link down in the video description. In the pinned comment, takes you back to uh, AliExpress. It will be affiliate link, but it won't cost you any extra. So if you wanna get this and help out the channel as well, please consider uh, clicking on that whenever you wanna go purchase it. All right, guys, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. While you're at it, click the bell. You'll be notified when I do upload new videos. And as always, guys, have a great day.